All right, back again, folks. I opened up a ton more cards, and I just could not wait. So, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make videos of a lot of these things I opened. I did a lot of set breaks, um, some packs of cards, but today we've got 88 tops, which I thought was a very good set. Nice, clean design. But that's not all I've got, because I am going to be breaking open an 89 tops um, set to the right of it. So that's going to be the set break here. Along with that came this tops traded set from 89 with you know Barry Sanders, Troy Aikman, Dion, Derek Thomas rookies, and then um, there was also. The thousand yard club for that year. I always kind of like the thousand yard club clubs. You get a lot of good backs and receivers in there, of course. Actually, this set is this isn't a set. That's something else. So this is the '89 top set. So the third thing I'm opening is this, which was a lot of on eBay that I got of 19. Is it 78, 77, 79? I don't know, 80. I. I think it was 1980 Topps football. I bought like 100 cards for, I don't know, probably a little more than I should have spent, maybe maybe nine or 10 bucks. But there's a bunch of Tony door sets in there. So I was like, all right, let's just go for it. I always like door set, one of my favorites. So without further ado, let's start cracking wax. So let's pull this sucker up. Yeah, 88 Topps. Um, you know, not, not obviously not as um, uh, lucrative as some of the other top series um, football in the 80s. Of course, the big sets, uh, everybody knows, 84 and 86 are the two big ones. You know, you got Marino and Elway rookies in 84. You got um, Jerry Rice rookie. Um, now, I don't have those two sets. I plan on getting them soon. Um I'm just going crazy buying stuff, but I have, I bought the 83 set, I bought the 85 set, I broke those out, I already had the 87, because that's the set I started collecting when I was a kid, so I had I bought that one first years ago, that was like the only set I had here and a few other cards that I kept, because I sold all my cards, I don't know, four or five years ago, all the good ones I still had left, I sold all the commons off years before that, because I had way too much stuff. I was just like, well, what do I need all these cards for anymore? And then, like, the last few weeks, I don't know what it was. I've been watching more and more um, pack breaks online of people opening cards that I used to open when I was a kid, and I was like, I miss that, man. So, I'm like, what the heck? Let's go for it. And um, All right, so this is the first pack here. You see a Jerry Rice on the back there. Um, the gum is on the Bill Freilich right here. I can't remember if Bill Freilich ended up being a Hall of Famer or not. It seems like he might have been, or maybe he got it mixed up with Mike Ken, one of these other um, Falcons linemen. All right, so there's the Jerry Rice. A decent little card there, yeah. I'll take that. 1,078 yards that year. He missed three games, Giants, Falcons, Cardinals. He only had 75 against my Bears. Bears! That's right, Jerry. Ain't nothing you and Billy Walsh and Joe Montana could do against my Bears. Well, except for win a bunch of Super Bowls. Oh, there's speaking of Joe. There he is with Bernie Kosar, little passing leaders. And I like these cards like this. Usually I don't really hold on to, even if it's got a superstar like Montana. I just don't, for where I'm at collecting right now, I just, I'm kind of a minimalist and I don't want to be collecting a ton of stuff. So just a second, got to get some more light here. So, like all-star cards, stuff like that. I make a few exceptions, like thousand-yard clubs. I always like. I'll hold on to those. But like a lot of our all-star cards and stuff, I just don't care for. All right, so let's go back to. We got Raymond Butler. We got Daryl Green, Hall of Famer, Tops All Pro, awesome player. I'll still set this aside. I don't know how to keep it. I'll probably put in a lot. Gerald Carter, Neil Lomax. I like Neil Lomax. I'm going to set him aside. Eric Dickerson. Charles White. So, you know, he used to be a Ram, and then he became a Colt. I don't, think it, I don't know if it was the same year or what. 
Well, Charles White, he was a Heisman winner. I don't think he really did much at first, and he came back later on. I think he was drafted in like 1980 or 81. I think out of USC. And um, yeah, then he had his big year like seven or eight years later. So Dickerson, 1,288 yards. Charles White, 1,374. I mean, the Rams' offensive line is probably a testament, too. You know, they were blocking for Dickerson, too, and then Charles White. Let's see, where's Walter at there? Uh, it would have been Walter's last year. So Neil Anderson, Neil the Deal's down there at 586. Only two guys over 1,000 yards that year. I don't remember, was that the strike year, 87? Yeah, it was a strike year, I think. That's why. Um, yeah, yep. All right, so Leo Lewis, uh, Stump Mitchell, that's a team card. Chuck Long, it's a guy I know, I don't know him personally, but I know him online and follow his videos on YouTube. Big Lion fan, maybe I'll send him uh, some of the Lion cards. Mike Harden, Floyd Dixon. All right, I need to stop talking and just look at some of these cards. Bill Fralick, I think he might be a Hall of Famer. But a lot of offensive lineman cards are not too collectible. Uh, can't say I know too many people that go after the offensive line cards. You know, it's just not a glory, uh, sexy position, right? But then those guys are what get it done. The guy, those guys are what gets it done down there in the paint. No, that's basketball. Down there in the trenches. Carlos Carson. My other buddy's a big Chief fan. Maybe I'll set that one aside. Cody Reeson. Oh, look, here's Jerry Rice again. So there's the base card. I had a few of these years ago, and this card's in good shape. All right, Jerry Rice, 22 touchdowns that year. That's nice. We'll put that aside. Mark Brown, Sam Mills. He was a real good linebacker. This is his rookie card. I think he played in the USFL, though. So this is his first tops card in the NFL. Yeah, three years in the United States Football League. Yeah, the Saints had some really good linebackers uh, when he played. Sam Mills, Ricky Jackson, who ended up being a Hall of Famer, um, and then also Von Johnson. Um, shoot, I'm forgetting somebody else. Oh, Pat Swilling. Yeah, Pat Swilling was an all-pro there for a while. Leonard Marshall, he was part of some of those great defense, uh, giant defenses in the 80s. Mike Kofer, he's a good linebacker for the Lions. 49ers had the same name, uh, Michael Kofer, as a kicker, uh, a white guy. Um, Randy Wright, and then uh, Packers quarterback. Mark Brown, I think is that my second Mark Brown? George Rogers, now, he was a good back um, and during the 80s. He came in the league, and he ran for 1,600 yards his rookie year with the Saints. Did I just spit on there? I don't know. I might have. <laughs> but there he's ran four times over 1,000. And a good back out of South Carolina. Um, but, yeah, he's kind of got forgotten about. But he was. I'm going to set him there, too. We got Phil Sims, Eugene Marv, Leonard Marshall again, another, and uh, Freeman McNeil. Speaking of good backs, he was one of the better backs of the 80s that gets overlooked. Because he could not only run the ball, but he could uh, catch out of the backfield. And pretty consistent. Not always over 1,000 yards, but guy got it done. I think he's in the top 10 statistically over that decade for rushing yards. All right. So that's two packs in. Let's actually take a double check look there because I know I got well, I know I got two Leonard Marshalls. Yeah, another Mark Brown. Okay. So, yeah, some repeats right off the bat. Um, well, there's a bear. Oh, speaking of great running backs in the 80s, Roger Craig. Boy, that guy had some fierce high knees. And somebody that could catch out of the backfield, I mean, that's the go-to guy in the 80s, uh, the running back that was catching out of the backfield. Uh, excellent talent. Uh, in my opinion, he should be in the Hall of Fame. Um, the, those 49er dynasties of the 80s, he was a big reason why. I mean, Wendell Tyler was down there earlier, uh, but and he was good back in his own right. But uh, Roger Craig, fantastic running back. 
Chip Banks, good linebacker for the Lions. There's Ricky Jackson, Hall of Famer. Um, I'm just going to set those there. I'll figure them out later. Jacob Green, I think he had a decent career. Probably Pro Bowl here or there. Now, there's Eric Dickerson with the Colts. So, yeah, that's his first year with the Colts. 1,100, uh, 1,000 yards, five touchdowns. Nothing to sneeze at, and that would have been a shortened strike year. Um, Billy Ray Smith, he was kind of um, a star early on in his career and kind of faded out, I think. He was out of Arkansas. Chip Banks, yeah, he was a decent player for the Browns. Bobby Joe Edmonds, Rick Donnelly, Stanford Jennings, Paul Palmer, Al Toon and J.T. Smith, Frank Pollard, Deron Cherry. Yeah. You know, the Steelers had like four or five running backs in the course of like four years that, you know, each one of them had like about 600 yards off and on, or six to 800 yards. I think Ernest Jackson had 1,000, but it seemed like two or three of them for Baylor University, and Frank Pollard's one of them. Deron Cherry, he was a really good safety for the Chiefs. Oops, that card went on the floor. That'll go to my buddy that's a big Chief fan. And my third, Jerry Rice. This is a record breaker. I had the, uh, uh, was it, scoring leaders before. And then, all right, we got uh, Mike Singletary, um, Hall of Famer. If anybody saw that Super Bowl commercial yesterday, where they're at that reception thing and the ball falls on the ground. The guy with the beady little eyes that yells fumble. That's Mike Singletary right there. He, he was the anchor of that um, 85 Bears defense, 46 defense, Buddy Ryan. Gotta love Mike Singletary. He was a class act. All right, here we go. There's Charles White, the rushing leader that year. Um, I don't know if I had another pile going for a thousand yard clubs. Maybe I'll put them in there. They can stay there for now. Art Monk, Hall of Famer. Joe Nash, Steve Largent, Hall of Famer. Had the career uh, receptions leader um, lead when he retired. It would have been like about that year or the next. 752 receptions. Yeah. Out of Tulsa. Jim Collins, Calvin McGee. Michael Carter, decent nose tackle for the Niners. Phillip Epps. Jim Jeffcoat, there's a good name for the Cowboys. Him and Ed Two Tall Jones. Rick Bryan. Danny White, speaking of Cowboys. Ron Salt, not familiar with him. Bobby Bear, he's a USFL guy. Ron Holmes, Eric Howard, and Anthony Munoz, um, Hall of Famer. I'd say Anthony Munoz is probably the most collectible offensive lineman um, in the 1980s, I would say. I don't know, I can't think of a lot of other ones. All right, there's J.T. Smith. I'll put him down here. Um, Ray Childress, Seth Joyner, part of those great Eagles defenses. I think that's his rookie. Ron Brown, he was a track star. He ran in the Olympics. Doesn't necessarily correlate to a great football player, but he, was, he had some world-class speed. Harry Hamilton, Chris Washington, LT, Lawrence Taylor, we'll take that. This has a blemish on it, too. So this is what I kept thinking I spit, but it's the cards just have these little faded dots here and there on some of the borders or on the back. Dino Hackett, I think that's his rookie. Here's a really good running back in the 1980s, Joe Morris. Let me get situated better here. Uh, Joe Morris, all right. Good running back for the Giants. Got hurt in the Pro Bowl. His career was never the same. Um, yeah, he ran for 1,500 yards in 86, 14 touchdowns a year before that, 21 touchdowns. Calvin Bryant, decent... Um, Change of pace running back. Could catch out of the backfield, I think, pretty good. Yeah, he was a USFL guy out of North Carolina. Curtis Adams, Dean Biasushi, kicker. Oops, I'm holding it high. 
Chuck Nelson, kicker, and Donald Igwe Buke, kicker, another kicker. He went to Clemson and Frank Garcia. Wow, so that was a big pack on kickers and punters. Did I get more at the front? Oh, yeah, Brian Hansen. So I got like five punters and kickers in that pack. Yippee. So the cards to get in this set, though, obviously you got the Joe Montana right, right here on the front of the box. You can kind of see there. So, of course, I'm after that card, that'll be nice to get. Anytime you get a Joe Montana, is always a good card. And, of course, the other two big quarterbacks during that era, Elway and Marino, um, and Warren Moon, I consider him in that category. Um, maybe Jim Kelly. Um, oh, nice, Eric Dickerson. That's a sweet-looking card. I like Eric, Eric Dickerson. He was a fantastic running back. Um... But yeah, Bo Jackson's rookie, of course, is in this set. Vinny Testaverde's rookie. Um, but then there's guys like that I liked, like Sam Mills, uh, Mel Gray, Steve Jordan. He was a good tight end for a few for a little while. His rookie's eighty six tops. Jeff Bryant. Oh, Bosworth. A lot of hype with this guy. The Boz. Everybody always remembers Bo Jackson. Running him over on Monday night after Bosworth called him out. All right, we'll set Bosworth aside. Eddie Brown, he was a decent receiver for a few years there for the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Interception leaders. All right. Oh, there's Mark Clayton. Uh, Clayton, one of the Marks brothers with Dan Marino. He's a good receiver. Gary James, Paul Palmer, another out. Another Paul Palmer, okay. Well, that's another Chief. I should set him aside. You know, we'll do the whole Chiefs and Lions thing later. I don't really care too much about that. Now, some of these guys, it was the last season. Like, I, I'm sure, I know Peyton played a little bit that year. Now, there's a Walter Peyton record breaker card in here, but there's no, like, regular season Walter Peyton card in here, even though he ran for, like, 500 yards. I mean, like, it's Walter Peyton, man. I don't know why they wouldn't put him in there. All right, here's Kurt Warner. He was a good running back out of Penn State. Real good running back for in, in the 80s. Just missed 1,000, but they I guess they needed 1,000-yard club guys, so maybe they figured, well, he had enough receiving yards to mix it together. All right, Kenny Eastley. He's a Hall of Famer. Um, playing up there in Seattle in all those forgotten years in the 80s. A lot of picks out of UCLA. Chris Hinton, I'm pretty, pretty sure he's a Hall of Famer, too. And there's another Charles White. Oh, Jay Hilgenberg, so there's one of my Bears. Oh, he should be in the Hall of Fame. Fantastic center for the Bears. Oh, speaking of devil, we talked about some of the great quarterbacks of this set. There's one of them right there, Warren Moon. Hell of a quarterback. Had a cannon for an arm. Anthony Carter, really good receiver for the Vikings. Um, Vincey Glenn, I think that was his rookie. Some of these guys were fantastic on Tecmo Super Bowl. Vincey Glenn was decent. Chargers had a good secondary in that game, Nintendo game. Oh, Reggie Waite, Minister of Defense, probably the, one of the greatest defensive linemen of all time. He used to just pick offensive linemen up and throw them. Dave Duerson, I never had this card. I don't think I had the Bears set that year. Focus camera. Sorry, folks. There we go. There's Dave Duerson. Unfortunately, he had ended up killing himself because he had the, the CTE condition. There's another guy that ended up killing himself. Um, Dave Wimmer. He was fantastic. Um, in Tecmo Super Bowl for the 49ers. Him and Ronnie, Ronnie Lott, the two safeties, just pick everything off. And then here's Dan Marino. That corner over here is a little smudged, unfortunately. But Danny Marino card. Oh, and then we got wax on the back. Yeehaw. The great Dan Marino. All right, so this stack I'm going to set to the side here. And I'm going to put it down in front of the box. I don't know. I guess folks can't even see that. Yeah, like that. Maybe I'll just start holding the cards down there. 
All right, so these packs just opening right up. So there's Drew Hill, 1,000 yard club. Mark Kelso, one of the interception leaders this year. And that's his rookie card. He's a decent, decent safety for the Bills. God, am I having focusing issues here? Focus, camera, focus. There we go. Oh, there's Tony Dorsett. All right. Tony D, one of my favorites. Gerald McNeil, Hanford Dixon, hell of a, hell of a ball player there for uh, Cleveland Browns. An all pro in quite a few years. JT Smith, Rick Donnelly, Doug Cosby, Jerry Rice, scoring leader again. Greg Townsend, good sack artist, defensive lineman for the Raiders. Andre Reed. Basically, the AFC version of Jerry Rice. Well, not quite, but as close as you were going to get. Really good receiver. Hall of Famer, Mike Bell. Or Andre Reid, not Mike Bell. Matt Boza. Oops. Mike, Mark Haynes. Chris Burkett. That's his rookie. And there's a Oilers Warren Moon card. All right. I kind of got two little main piles there. I got the you know, kind of stars and keepers. I got the comments pile. I probably I tend to go back to the comments pile later and see what I want to maybe I'll overlook some things. And then even there's some guys I put in the star pile later on. I changed my mind about I guess. All right, so we got Webster Slaughter, thousand yard club, and he had 806 yards. So not quite. They were really looking. All right, Seahawks Kurt Warner against the Bears there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was straight shortened year. All right, we got Hall of Famer Charles Haley. All right. Tony Eason, Neil Gugamos, Ricky Sanders, part of the oh, was it the Three Amigos or something the Redskins receivers called them each other themselves Gary, Gary Clark, Ricky Sanders and Art Monk. I mean that was the Broncos that call themselves the Three Amigos, Ricky Natil and Vance Johnson, and um, was it Webster, Webster, not Webster Slaughter, Mark Jackson, Al Smith, Keith Bostic. Oh, I thought those were the same card at first. Al Toon, Wisconsin Badgers, Pat Leahy, Barry Wilburn, John Tice, uh, Jim Everett, team card. Ronnie Harmon, I believe this is his rookie. Uh, this guy could catch out of the backfield really good. I'll set him down. Yeah, I know he didn't have a card in 87. And there's Vance Johnson. This other guy from the previous pack, Gerald McNeil. He was one of the smaller guys in the league, but he was a really good return man. You got him listed here at 147 pounds. Out of Baylor, Baylor Texas. Hmm. All right, let's find the Bo Jackson. Let's find the Joe Montana. Uh, me being a Bears fan, I'd like to get another uh, Neil Anderson rookie. I got a few already, uh, but why not have a few more? Um, let's flip this over. So we just got a Mark Clayton a little bit ago, and here's a, the Mark Clayton 1,000-yard club where he got 775 yards. And you just got to remember that that was the strike shortened year that year, 87. I think there was a strike in 83 or something also. Uh, these guys were both decent ball players in different positions. Gary Zimmerman, O-line, for those great uh, Viking teams that got overshadowed in the 80s by, well, the Bears, the Redskins, the Giants, 49ers, even the Rams. General Talley, Michael Downs. Did I say the Giants? Yeah, there were some really good teams in the NFC. Ray Donaldson, I think he ended up being a Hall of Famer. Tim Crumry, Rob Riddick, Mike Tomzak. Yeah, he's pretty much a backup career uh, quarterback. He was a bear, I'll put him down there. Oh, David Fulcher, I think this is Fulcher's rookie. That dude could hit, especially on Tecmo Super Bowl, but in real life too. 
but he was big. 6'3", 228 out of Arizona State. Gary Anderson, Chris Washington, Darren Nelson, Dino Hackett. Darren Nelson. I want to say he went over. Was he part of the trade with Herschel Walker where he went the Cowboys and the Cowboy um the Cowboys got a ton of stuff, of course. I know that they gave up Isaac Holt. Did they no they Vikings got Isaac Holt. I don't remember how it went. I I know Herschel Walker went to Minnesota and his career was never quite as good as what it probably should have been. James Lofton. Hall of Famer, Steve Cox, Jim Leahy, Mark Haynes, Frank Minifield, Ronnie Lippett, Andre Tippett, Lippett and Tippett for the Patriots. He's a Hall of Famer. There's a, Speaking of Herschel Walker, there he is right there with the Cowboys. There's Herschel Walker cards in here too. Deron Cherry, Carl Mecklenburg. Boy, he looks chunky there. He's a good linebacker, though. Another Singletary. This one's in better shape. The other one had that little stain thing on the border. So nice to see that card pop up again. And McElroy, he was a pretty good safety for the Raiders, I think. Um, a pro bowler. Perennial pro bowler. Out of Bailier. Everybody's out of Bailier. Here's Randall Cunningham. Did he lead the Eagles in rushing? Yes, he did. Another Andre Reed. All right, so we're getting some duplicates here. Um, yeah, I'd like to get the Vinny Testaverde too. Why not? All right. Thousand Yard Club is Gerald Riggs, one of the better running backs of the 1980s. I think he's top five statistically rushing. Power running back. Mike Pitts. That card's in nice shape. Too bad it's Mike Pitts. I guess it's a little off center here. It's Pat Swilling. We talked about him earlier. I think this is his rookie. Now he was a USFL guy too. Or was he? This is off center. He's out of Georgia Tech. Yeah, it's too thick on this side. Still a good looking card. Robert Awalt, top super rookie. Waymer, John L. Williams, probably one of the better receiving backs in the league, uh, especially at that time. Now this guy is underrated because you know they always judge a running back by, oh, does he rush rush for a thousand yards? Does he rush for a thousand yards? So John L. Williams, he didn't. I don't think he ever ran for a thousand yards. I think he ran up to nine hundred one year. But most of his years playing, he caught, he rushed for five to seven hundred yards, and he would catch for about five to seven hundred yards. So you add those two up, he was doing over a thousand yards from scrimmage. But because it wasn't all rushing, people kind of overlooked him. But he was a pretty good back out of Florida. Here's Eric Martin, really good receiver for the Saints. So I have to put them there after I talk about how great he was, right? James Lofton. Hall of Famer. There's Bo Jackson. All alone, it says. And Marcus Allen led the team in rushing. You know, Bo, even the years he played, well, speaking of other backs that were really good receiving backs and never went over 1,000, Keith Byers, based probably about the NFC equivalent of John L. Williams. But getting back to Bo Jackson was, um, he never really put up a big stats playing in the NFL. I can't remember. I think I want to say he missed some games because of the baseball. Richard Dent, NC Glenn rookie or record breaker, longest interception return. I don't know. I just I might finish these up in a little bit some other time. All right. Jacob Green. Another Eric Dickerson. That's our second one. Our second Jerry Rice. That seems to be the thing with, well, not only tops, but other cards. 
you seem to get to see a lot of similar patterns. So once you get one card, you almost expect to see the other card you saw earlier. Roy Green, he was a really good receiver for the Cardinals. Um, yeah, he had some pretty solid years. I'll set him down there. Um, Chris Burkett, Jackie Ship. There's Bobby Bear, Saints team card. Uh, Cornelius Bennett, top super rookie. Uh, we got, is that part of the card or is that how the picture was? I don't know. But yeah, he was a sought after player there back in the day. I'll set him there. I think I'll do maybe three more packs and then we'll call it a day on these and pick up the rest another time. I just don't feel like opening much more. Well, we got Randall Cunningham with the gum stain on the back of the card. Okay. Stump Mitchell. Jim Covert for the Bears. Jumbo. He played uh, college with Dan Marino at University of Pittsburgh. Earl Farrell. Ron Holmes, Eric Howard, Kevin Green, Hall of Famer. This, I believe, is his rookie. There's another card stuck behind there. DJ Dozier. And I'm pretty sure he was a two-sport athlete, if I remember right. He, I think he got drafted to play in MLB also. Never panned out in either, I don't think. Well, I know he didn't in football. Vincey Glenn, rookie. Reggie Roby, good punter. He's got that one bar. Joe Cribs, he was a good running back for a while there. Oh, yeah, he ran for over 1,000 two years in a row when he left for the USFL and he came back out of Auburn. Yeah, I'll put him aside because I like to put some of the older cards as some of the guys that are better in their younger career. I don't know, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, Curtis Duncan, he was a good receiver for the Oilers. So Warren Moon, I think one year he threw – for 1,000 yards to four different receivers, and Curtis Duncan, I want to say, is one of those receivers. Hayward Jeffries, Drew Hill, and Ernest Givens. Now, we won't see the Hayward Jeffries in this set. We already saw the Drew Hill. Um, I don't believe Henry Hayward Jeffries had a card yet, um, but it um, was in the cards yet, but um, Ernest Givens definitely was. There's Henry Elliard, one of the better receivers of the 1980s. Well... Late 1980s, I should say. Jerome Brown, he died tragically, I think, car accident. Very good player for the Eagles. We'll set Jerome Brown down. Sammy Winder, he had some decent years in the beginning of his career with the Broncos. And there's Bracken Randall Hank. I'll give that to my buddy at work, who Cunningham was one of his favorite players. And he gets the wax team. <laughs> All right, so the agreement I just said a little bit ago was two more, well, three more packs. So that was one. This is two. And then I got to sit down. And I'll probably turn the camera off and maybe open some other um, football, but not, it'll be done with the 88 for tonight. We'll pick it up another time. All right, Michael Kofer, Randy Wright, Mark Brown, George Rogers. Bill Sims, so yeah, I already got a bunch of these cards. G. Marv, Freeman McNeil, Al Toon, 1,000 yards. Al Toon, what did you end up getting? 976, just shy. Tony Franklin, John Bosa, Bernie Kosar. Yep, he was pretty popular there in Cleveland for a little bit. Cleveland had some really good teams in the 80s. Just never could quite get over the hump to the Super Bowl. John Elway in the drive, and, and of course you had Ernest Biner in the fumble. Felt so bad for Ernest Biner. Anybody that you know has a 